Hey everybody, welcome back to the program. I am very excited because here in the vinyl pad, I have the honor of having a singer-songwriter, troubadour extraordinaire, Grammy Award winner, Colin Hey, Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure, lovely to be here. So let's talk about the new album. First off, congratulations. I mean, it it sounds wonderful. Thank I, you. I love the overall feeling I get when I listen to it. And right. I think a lot of that is just who you are and it comes out in spades. But on another note, it sounds really good. Right. And most of this was recorded in your in your studio. Yeah, in my in my basement. Yeah. In my lo- in the laundry. Oh, it's called the studio. It's called the washroom. I just, I really enjoyed all the different uh, styles and, and and the way, the way it was put together and sequenced. It's very, very well done. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a weave, isn't it? You're just trying to, you're trying to like. I re- had over twenty songs, and so uh, because of the pandemic, I was home a lot, and yeah. So I had to choose ten songs, and some of the ones I left off were my favorites, you know. But it was just because these ones seemed to seem to live live together well especially because oh, of the yeah. string arrangements and so it seemed like like you said when you listen to it you got a feeling or it created a kind of a mood i didn't want to i didn't want to change that mood i didn't want to mm-hmm. want to all of a sudden be oh you know to take yeah. you out of that you know so i wanted to try and create some kind of beauty so that once you were in there you didn't you didn't want to go anywhere else you wanted to stay there so that was some sometimes that had to do with the with the song choices yeah i'm very fond of this uh, this is probably my favorite thing that i've done this last one you know you always wanted to be well if you know if if i've, if I've got nothing else you know you want to you want to go out with something that you really like, you know. So you keep making them because you want to get yeah. them better. But, and even you know, for years I would make records and I would, you know, and I didn't really know to do them because I didn't have any distribution or anything. So, so I would just do it myself, not very well, inefficiently. But I'd make a record and I would, and people would write to me and say, "Oh, I want that record." And so I would just, you know, buy all those little CD wrappers and go down and post them in the post office, yeah. and mail my mail my records to people for, for quite a long time I did that you know? wow yeah yeah which wasn't much and I had um, I started going out on the road and that's really what was sustained has sustained me for the last 30 years not not you know not not so much financially but just um, creatively and emotionally and and uh, you know you get a certain amount of nourishment from you know you, you write a song and you record it and then you go okay what's What's missing here? And you go well. The other ingredient is going out and playing it, and then people like it, right. and and, the, and but they're there in the audience, and so you get that, I don't know, a sense of completion or something. It's a circle, you know. You you put that energy out, and it comes back. Yeah, you you talk about that as like a high. <clears throat> yeah, it is. I think a very yeah. clean high. Yeah, because as opposed to the drink, <laughs> which is not a clean high. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty messy. Yeah. <laughs> the title track. And you s- somehow convinced Ringo to play some drums on that. Yeah, it was it was quite uh, it was quite it was so great because I had I had the idea for the song I had the musical idea f- for the song for a while I didn't have any lyrics but I had this uh, this musical idea and I always imagined him playing drums on it right from the start you know even because what I had I had this little app on my phone. I think it's called Music Memos or something. I don't know whether they even have it anymore. But you can write a little piece. You write a little idea. Yeah. And you just hit this little drum kit, and it plays along, and it sounds great. And it sounded like Ringo. <laughs> you know, like it was just yeah. playing along. Had these little fills, and I'm like, oh my god, that, that's that's like a Ringo fill, you know. So anyway, right from the start, I had I had um, I had the idea of him playing on it, and so I finished the song. I even had another friend of mine play the drums, which sounded fine, sounded great, you sure, know. Sure, sure. But then anyway, I just thought, oh, I'll, I'll ask him, you know, and, and uh, he says, yeah, great, yeah, send it over. <laughs> so, um, so that was, that was, that was a, a beautiful thing for me. I saw the lady Katrina, she was all a jangling at the bar. So the second track, Love is everywhere. Yeah, uh, one of my Patreon supporters 
wanted to know what uh, inspired this song. Well, it's um, I write a lot of songs with my friend that lives up the road. His name's Michael George Addis. He's a really great um, acoustic fingerstyle guitar player, great songwriter. And I had a bunch of songs that I was going to work on for this record, and he kept on coming around to my house, and he would call me and go, I got something, and he would come over. <laughs> and one of the things he had was uh, he had this musical idea, and he just goes, uh, love is everywhere. That's it. That's what I got, you know. And so we go from there. And I go, well, that's good. And you play it. Love is everywhere. I thought, oh, that's good. And uh, it's just that idea of, um, you know, being a, being a couple of old hippies, really, that, that you kind of, you're drawing on stuff from the 70s that you thought, or even the 60s and 70s, where you thought, okay, well, the world is going to change, but you know we all know it didn't. You know, yeah. Um, but we can we can still remember, you know, whether we were uh, whether we were dosed or not on some kind of hallucinogen. You know, you were sitting in front of a tree, and you can you can actually see the molecular structure of it, and go, my, this is just there's so much going on here in this world that's that that is maybe not so obvious, but if you have some kind of love for the natural environment, it's there. Uh, and so I suppose that's where the song came from in, 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 in the sense that, you know, even although Vlad the Bad has gone into Ukraine and he's like dropping all those bombs and killing all these people, you know, you, you're, you're not gonna change that essential thing in me where I just think, well, okay, this is, we have to, we have to see through that because yeah. it's, it's, it's not really what, where we're trying to get to. Yeah, you know, we're trying to see the love, and we're trying to get to that. Getting back to the song, it's just a, an expression of that simple idea that, you know, if you look for it, you 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 can find it, because it's there. Maybe you just have to, you know, look at um, look a little longer, a little mm -hmm. with a little more, uh, you know, kindness in your heart, and you and it'll, and it'll be it'll become apparent. Never been a day The Sea of Always had a little bit, you touched on it earlier, how like going back to the hippie days and how, you know, love is still there, but like, you know, things are still, they didn't progress the way no. that should have happened. I feel like you, that's, at least I get some of that from that song. I don't know if that was your intent, but I get a little bit of that. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what really what's going on with that song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's a funny one. I, I think about that song sometimes. I mean, I like the... I, I had the music for it. Again, Michael came over to my house and I had this music and I said, hey, listen, I was playing some stuff. Yeah. He said, yeah, that's good, that's good. What's that? And I go, it's, I don't know, it's this idea. And um, and I played the little chorus chords and he said, um, he sang, um, fold my wings, pack my things, sail on down the river. I thought, that's good. And the sea of always, I don't know, It's it could be about you know, I suspect there is no, I suspect strongly, uh, being a, an atheist, I suspect strongly there's no afterlife. Mm -hmm. You know, I suspect strongly that the curtains close. Uh, but it would be nice if there was somewhere where you went to a beautiful, peaceful, tranquil place and, you know, you could go for a swim every now and again. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I doubt that. I doubt that. But I, I, you know, it's unknowable at this point. So there's a lot of that in the songs, I think, too. As you, as you get older, you... I. I become, uh, you know, just more aware of mortality and that kind of and that kind of ridiculousness. You think, oh my God! At some point, you, you, you know, you exit, you know, and and um, and especially with my friend Michael, he's like seventy six, and he's keeps going. When is this record coming out, man? He goes, come on, I'm not getting, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> I, I noticed too, like you, you draw upon imagery of the ocean of water yeah. a lot. And I, are you, I are you near the ocean? Or? Yeah, I like the, I like, the, I like the ocean. Yeah, I mean, I've yeah. always been close, even when I was young. I, I like that uh, a connection, even if I stand by the Pacific and mm -hmm. I grew up for a long time in Australia, in Australia, that's a connection too, because it's really, it's the same sea. If you just go that way, you yeah. go for about 10,000 miles, you'll hit a, a beach, unlike, not unlike this one, where the Pacific's also lapping up on that yeah. as well. And we traveled across 
many oceans when we went right. from uh, from Britain to Australia. It was four weeks. That's still I still remember that so vividly. Wow. Of being just surrounded for so long. Yeah. By huge, big oceans, and sometimes there were big seas, and sometimes it was amazing. You were cutting through this ocean, and it was just completely still. Wow. Like the like the ocean. You know, you always imagine ocean sure, to sure. be moving and shifting. Just like a lake. Like a lake. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. I mean, I should try and think of something else, but the sea's always no, don't. The sea's always there. Starfish and, and unicorn is like my, my favorite song off of here. Yeah, mine too. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And yeah, everything about it. It's nebulous. It's it's yeah. it's flowy, and it's it leaves. Well, I look at it as a record album. It leaves side one perfectly because I just I want to hear more because right. it just the way it ends. It's mm. a little bit. It's a little bit like like this in yeah. a sense. Well, that's good. That's a good thing. I mean, I think it's a, the fact that you want to hear more. Um, you know, I, I, I sometimes wonder about whether I should... The Starfish and, and Unicorns is, is um, about my... Uh, well, it was came from my sister and brother and I spreading my mother and father's ashes okay. in Melbourne. And because uh, we weren't in, the, we weren't, we were never hardly ever in Melbourne together. So, and I, for years, I was driving around with my with my mother's ashes in the car, and my sister had my father's, and so we thought, well, we have to, you know, yeah. we have to do something with them. So we all we decided we wanted to go and and um, spread them where they used to go swimming in oh, the summertime. Yeah, they dive off the pier, so we did that, and just this whole. I never realized how much. Of a mist it causes, you know, when you actually spread ashes on a still day, you know. Again, speaking of the bay, it was very, it was very still. But anyway, the, the ashes, uh, the, the, it settled on this family of starfish and didn't even realize they were there until they started moving, you know. So that was their final resting place. Under rocks and stones where the secrets of starfish and unicorns live. Not everyone has mother and father, and 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 sometimes it's a, it's not um, it's not what it could be. I had a very tempestuous relationship with my father, but I, I dearly, dearly loved him. But it was very, very difficult for quite a long time, you know. So there's that in there as well. But what you're left with after they've gone, I still have a, you know, relationships with both of them, even although they've been gone, yeah. because of the fact that when I was growing up, they were so ever present and made me feel so loved and so secure you know so i have still have a dialogue i feel you know with them you know on driving home for example you know you they they come to you in little moments little sure. dreams and little and i love i love that i relish that that fact that you can that they can still be alive you know yeah and the strings on that are are really lovely and my friend chad i uh, asked him to sing in the courses and because i've been in california so long and i wanted to try and just put a hint of Beach Boys in there yeah. because when I was still in Scotland in the shop, um, I had good vibrations and thought, oh, I want to go, I want to go where that yeah. music gets made, you know. Finishing off side one, um, it, Into the Bright Lights, I, I really enjoyed uh, right. It's it's in three four, right? Waltz time, yeah. more or less. Yeah, I, I really yeah. love that that yeah. feeling you you gave that song. That song was written by Chris Trapper, and he uh, opens up for me a lot. You know, we we do shows together and have done for the last quite a long time. And whenever he would play that song, I, I would just it would always stop me in my tracks, and I would go, oh, "That's a that's a very very cool song," and it would make me think. It would make me feel like I was. In the right place, like I was, I was where I was supposed to be. So anyway, I just was when I was working on this record. I just thought about that song, and I thought, oh, I'll just have a crack at that, you know. And it came up really well. I get this image of a couple like dancing in the air. That's what that's what right. I get kind of floating up. Well, I asked him what it was about, yeah. you know, and um, he said uh, that it's it just came from. Of course, he gave some kind of you know normal, <laughs> you know, kind of waffly singer songwriter answer, you know, <laughs> about what it was about, 
And um, but eventually he said, "Well, it's it's a recurring dream that I have that I'm flying." Mm. And I thought, "Oh, that's nice," you know. Yeah. And then I said to him, "Well, I have I have a recurring dream, which is true. I used to have a recurring dream where I was actually pushing a wheelbarrow full of turnips." <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> but um, then the sky opened, yeah. and 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 God spoke to me, as a you know as a card carrying atheist. Right, right. God spoke to me and said, What's up? "Don't worry, Colin, you're a tiller of the land." <laughs> and I went, "Ah, oh, okay. So that's what I'm going to do with these turnips then. All right, okay." <laughs> That picture there oh, uh, yeah. is um, is the street that I lived in when I was a kid. That's that's where we had the shop. If you turn it over, that's the street. Of, this photograph was taken about 1906, so about 50 years before I lived there. But I remember walking home from school, and I was as, as I was getting taller because I could never see over that wall. Yeah. But I remember I always used to jump up, and if I could, I was trying to see over it. And so I thought, oh, I'm getting I'm getting to be a I'm getting uh, much. I'm much older now, I felt good about myself because I finally <laughs> was able to jump up and see over that wall. There wasn't much over the wall. <laughs> it was just the fact that I could see over it. But I lived, the shop was just here about where those two people are. And I lived up here in this, oh. wee, in this wee bedroom up here. That was for the, where I spent the first the first uh, 10 years, uh, well, for, from when I was about five yeah. until I was 14 years old. So well, I was working on the, on the cover and um, uh, Robert Hakowski is his name, the guy who did the cover. So he found that photograph of the street, and I thought, oh, that's fantastic! I love that. So, and there's an accompanying, there's an accompanying uh, postcard that goes that went with it as well, where the postcard was written by somebody who was there on holiday oh. and said, um, you know, we've arrived here. Uh, the weather's been nice, but I don't really like the place, so we'll probably be home <laughs> soon. <laughs> so for Agatha Bell, it ended very well. All I see is you. Can you talk about the the arrangement on that? Yes, it's um very very Scottish, isn't it? Yeah. And um, so Michael again came over and he had the music for it, and and I thought, wow, that just it's this sounds like a Scottish air, this song, you know. And so I wrote that I wrote it accordingly, and. Um, Again, it's about the natural wonder of the world, of just being, um, you know, being just kind of amazed sometimes about where you are, whether you're, like, near where I live, there's a huge park, you know, and you go into the park and it's, often you have it to yourself, you know, and you're standing looking again at the mighty Pacific and the, mm -hmm. the, the sun and, the, and, the, and the, the, just the majesty of, of, of where you are. Blows me, it blows my mind that I could have this on a daily basis, you know, staggering. And it's about that, but it's also getting back to my parents again is the fact that where I find myself is a function of all the decisions that they made too, you know, of, oh, we're going we're gonna to go from Glasgow to the coast, which is 30 miles, which is a long way in Scotland. We're going to kind of try and, you know, do something better for the, our children. We're going to go to the other side of the world, you know, when when they were in their 40s and all those dis momentous decisions that yeah. get made because they had, you know, they were quite, they were dreamers in a way, you know, they wanted to go and um, experience what the other side of the world felt like. Um, so there's that in it as well uh, in the song. Um, and, and then, of course, I thought, well, this would be great with a, you know, with a whistle, with a, somebody who could play the thing. Yeah. So we we sent that across to a great English musician who played <clears throat> played the whistle on it and it just kind of it became this um, quite anthemic I think. A man without a name the way it opens side B uh, was just was a great because because this is this is a little bit more yeah down tempo this kicks it up yeah kicks off side two like oh yeah it's got a nice yeah. groove to it uh -huh. yeah I really en yeah, enjoyed that was, that. Uh, that was um thinking about Elvis <laughs> yeah that song. 
Yeah, yeah, when yeah. I was, when I'd be messing around with that idea, yeah. I just thought I thought of Elvis and because um, I came kind of late. I came late to Elvis. You know, I was a bit young to sure. to pick up on the on the initial. Um, the rockabilly era. The, yeah, the yeah. the initial his his in, initial um, breakthrough. You know, and all the and which was incredible, really. Um, but I was a bit young, mm -hmm. so by the time I got to you know, nine or ten, it was the Beatles for me, you know. Mm -hmm. But then I, I, I came back to those songs later, like Hound Dog and, and listened to Scotty Moore's guitar playing. Oh, and, yeah. Phew, like an unbelievable, you know, the sound of those records and the fact that it was only, you know, what, what they did in the studio with those three oh, or four yeah. guys. Yeah, with him, Bill Black, just <clears throat> doing the slap bass. Scotty Moore, yeah, he, I studied yeah. that guy so much, just trying to get those licks down because he was so... Effortless. Yeah, and it sounds simple, but it it's hard when you want to really, you really. Know. I mean, and a lot of the times it was on the middle pickup, you know, which is like yeah. if you're a guitar player, you think, wow, you know, you you gonna play a solo, <laughs> you want to cut through it and middle pickup, and it's just what he played. It was all all in the fingers, you know. Yeah, yeah. Classic. How I got here, oh, I became a man without a name. But I've kind of managed to kind of. Um, find a, a, a way of playing that's, you know, perhaps um, got some kind of uh, individual kind of stamp to it. You know, it's mm -hmm. not it's not really like anything else. Well, it is very much an extension of you. And so that's that's what's, what's worked for me in a way, you know, is discovering different, maybe just different tunings. And it seems to work with my voice. It, if I'm messing around with a with a, a chordal idea, the uh, you know the what I sing and and how I sing kind of comes out of that. It seems to come out of the string mm -hmm. where the strings are, you know. And I think that's why a lot of the time, a lot of the songs are the, their their foundation is is based on on the on the on just the acoustic guitar and the voice. Well, yeah, you you feel it. Yeah, it's right. It's right here. Yeah. You feel the resonance. And you can sometimes yeah. see the vibe, you know, you see the, the frequency of the yeah. strings going and mm. it's like... It starts to float. Yeah. What do you see As the waves they rise and fall The final track for me, I mean, one, it was, it, it, it was a great way to end the album. But then two, like what I got from it especially with the title, When Does the End Begin? It felt very <laughs> apropos of just what everyone collectively in the world has been going through with this yeah. lockdown. I got that from it. And I don't know. I, I just, I, I really enjoyed, <laughs> enjoyed, enjoyed that song, like especially with at the end of it. The, yeah, and I, and I don't really, it's, it's, again, it's that thing of where, you're not I'm not really sure there's a lot of different little ideas in there that it's not fully formed it's it's quite open in a way yeah like um I like I like the idea I think there's a lyric on it I can't remember exactly what it is but it's um it, it talks about uh distraction you know and just the fact that we you know we go through our life just distracting ourselves oh wait from, what what <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, yeah, I you know, you. distracting ourselves from the inevitable, you know, which is which is the one thing we all share about the fact that at some point this all ends. You know, I'm not not trying to be, you know, really too dramatic or maudlin or talk about talk about death and mortality or so much, but it's really, or it can be about the the you know the death of a relationship where all of a sudden you realise that something is is it's not happening, but you stay in it. Yeah, just because Pete, you don't want to be alone. Yep, and uh, and so sometimes that's you know where does it? Where, you know you just can pinpoint the moment of where something's just it's not climatically, you know. Also, just with with regards to well, okay, well everyone's talking about the, the you know whether we've we're, whether we're at the tipping point, whether we've gone past the tipping point, about um, yeah. the, the degree of of, uh, of temperature increase in the, in the next uh, few decades. I definitely got that too. The yeah. environment, there's yeah. Some, yeah, everything seems very crucial at the moment, as opposed to say at the even when we were thinking about climate change in the seventies. Sure, you know we were aware of it, you know, but we uh, we knew we had some time. Right. 
but we don't have much time anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's the difference. I really want to ask you about your voice and how that was developed or how you discovered it or who were some of your influences because it's it's a wonderful voice. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And it feels to me it sounds to me so effortless like oh he's not really doing much. Like Sinatra at, at his at his later in his life felt like he was barely even singing but yet there's so much going on yeah. and that's what that's why he's so great. And I feel very similar to you. And it feels so down to earth and relatable. And again, it goes with the lyrics and how you approach songwriting. But I just, I, I'm kind of curious to know, like you just woke up one day, started playing as a teenager or? Yeah, pretty much. I started, um, we, I had a band in Melbourne called, I was in a band called Deep Impression. And- uh, <laughs> That's great, Dave. Yeah, and we had a singer. He got caught stealing musical equipment from the school like he stole I think he stole a PA oh, a yeah, bad okay. PA I Ugh. think you know yeah the cops came and took him away to question him yeah and so we had this gig at a church social and we didn't have a singer so I thought oh, I'll sing you know so I started singing we were doing things like Proud Mary and stuff like that and that's where I kind of discovered I mean I knew I could sing before but that's where I discovered that I could sing on stage, and when I and when I sang on stage, uh, the audience liked it. Yeah. They would come over and stand and and listen to me sing, and I thought, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But I, but but my, but my actual voice, the actual sound of the voice, um, came from my father because my father could sing. He was on the stage when he was young. He was a singer and a dancer. We had a very very similar voices, even my, even our speaking voices when we would call when I would call my sister or my brother or my mother they always used to get confused about who, whether it was my whether yeah. it was me and my father. So yeah, I got it from him. And my mother as well could sing also. Did they ever caution you about pursuing music when oh, you were yeah, younger? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was weird because they got me, they uh, they bought me singing lessons. <laughs> you know, they supported it. What did they expect? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then when I actually went into it, they were like, oh, you know, they were very worried for me because well, I think they were just, they didn't think it was going to, Sure. You know, work, you know, but they were very cool. They never it was they they kind of, you know, took it in their stride and they mm -hmm. were very underplayed it and kind of in a way true kind of Scottish fashion, if you like, you know, okay. let's not make a big deal about this, you know. Okay. I think that if you come from families in Scotland, there's a lot of there's a lot of families in Scotland, there's a lot of music in Scotland. So I mean, everyone's singing songs. I mean, it was a yeah. it was a tradition. You had to sing a party piece when you'd go to a party. You had to sing a song, otherwise you didn't get in. You didn't get into the party. Oh wow! Okay. And so you had to actually go well, I've, and you had your own song that you sang. Yeah. And you had to you had to you know hope that nobody sang that song before you did because if they did, well, you couldn't sing the song anymore because oh. someone's already sung it. Oh, okay. So Billy Connolly, the great Scottish comedian, would do a bit about that in his show where he would talk about listening, you know, and you would you would hear where a party is because you could hear people singing. And you go, oh, let's go over there at the corner there. There's something going on over there. And the way you could tell was because there was people singing. And that, in that um, particularly Scottish way, which is very funny. Yeah. How are you? You know, you didn't really know what they were saying. <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure for for hanging out in the vinyl pad. And then you're you're going on tour right now. I'm uh, going on tour. Uh, is it the tomorrow? United States? Or? Yeah, the United States. Yeah. Fantastic. So be on the lookout for that. Be sure to subscribe to Colin's YouTube channel as well as follow him on all the social media because he is there. And uh, be sh check out the album. Absolutely. And while you're at it, go through his back catalog because if you haven't already, it's fantastic. There's so many gems there. Uh, and that will do it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I am your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>